What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly Sports History for April 16th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Montgomery. As you can see, I'm still in the mountains. Uh, we got a good 16 and a half holes in before the rains washed us out yesterday afternoon. Uh, but overall, a good day. Uh, this might be a little quicker today because I'm trying to get it in as a true amateur. I forgot to pack my computer charger so we are on 18 percent battery right now so hopefully the sound is even good on this but we will we'll make through because i strive every day to make sure you're getting this day in philly sports history sixers nets update they did exactly what we wanted them to do exactly what they should have done just a dominant performance uh, i missed the first half because we were golfing but i know that the nets were double teaming joe and everybody else stepped up and i think that's going to be the key to the series guys like pj tucker guys like tobias are going to have to do their thing harden was just unreal uh hopefully they can just do the sweep and, and just get it done like i said just what we thought And if you want more on the sixers nets check out back to the future wherever you get your podcast with a ph um so they're back in action Monday night. I was hoping that the Hawks would put up a little bit more of a fight against the Celtics, but uh, they looked pretty dominant uh, in the first half being up 30. So kind of have our eyes looking forward to that, that series coming up. Union tied Chicago 2-2 last night. It's good for them to get a point. Now's the time for them to maybe start making a move. Uh, they're still outside of the playoffs looking in. Uh, Phillies not worth spending a ton of time on them that was just absolutely terrible terrible performance from top to bottom 13 nothing and they're still making the bonehead running mistakes and I, I don't know if that's coaching if they're trying to press too much or what but it's definitely at this point a cause for concern uh it's just every game it seems like something um and Stott now is kind of or that was Turner yesterday, but Stott, it's done it. Schwarber's done it. Cassianos. It's just, I think they're trying to do too much. Um, but it's still early. Hopefully help is on the way. And speaking of Stott, he's now hit safely in all games this year. Kind of the one lone bright spot. Uh, but they're back in action today. Hopefully with a much better performance than what yesterday was. All right. Today, we are going to stick with the Phillies theme. And we are going to go back to 1953. And on April 16th, 1953, the Phillies second baseman and leadoff hitter Connie Ryan had six hits in a game and tied the, the MLB record for consecutive hits in a nine inning game. Unfortunately, the Phillies did lose to the Pirates that day, 14 to 12. It is still the Phillies record for most hits in a game. Uh, there's a ton uh, that have five and it happened actually twice last year. Uh, JT Real Muto and Matt Verling did it on back-to-back -back days in September, actually, during that, that run to the wild card. Uh, during this game, Ryan scored three runs, had two doubles, but much like yesterday, the Phillies pitching staff could not get anyone out. And the 53 Phillies weren't that bad. They finished 83-71, uh, and 71, third place, 22 games back of the Dodgers, though. Um, and remember, they were only three years removed from winning the NL pennant at this point, so they still had a decent team. And for anybody who's like me, and in case you're wondering or scoring at home, Hall of Famer Wilbert Robertson of the Orioles back in 1892 and Rennie Stennett of the Pirates in 1975 hold the record for its seven hits in a nine-inning game. Uh, for a full game, Johnny Burnett of the Indians had nine hits in an 18-inning game. He had 11 at-bats. Uh, so that's the record for hits in a game. It's seven for a nine-inning game. All right, so... Eagles draft pick spotlight, one of my all-time favorites, Andy Harmon, number 91. The Dayton, Ohio native was the sixth-round pick, number 156 overall out of Kent State for the Eagles in 1991. Originally came in as a defensive end and learned a lot from Reggie White uh, before he left. But Harmon played seven years for the Eagles, um, 91 through 97. When Jerome Brown died, they actually moved him to defensive tackle. And from a three-year span between 92 and 95, he had 39 and a half sacks uh, before a knee injury cut short his career. But that ranks him second all-time for sacks in, in Eagles history for a defensive tackle behind Fletcher Cox. Second team All-Pro, just an overall kind of good guy. He just seems like he was one of those dudes that just uh, soaked it up. He was on that 91 team as a rookie that just was like the all-world defense. But on 
<coughs> excuse me, today's Eagles spotlight, Andy Harmon, the sixth round pick at 1991 out of Kent State for the Eagles. On this day in 1953, uh, Connie Ryan, Philly's second baseman, set the team record for six hits in a major league game that still stands today. Sixers looking good. Phillies, ugh. But this has been This Day in Philly Sports History. We'll be back with a normal episode tomorrow. I'm Jim Montgomery. Go have yourselves a Sunday. And until next time, I will see you when I see you.